What I have here is a new old stock General Electric model 7-4612BK clock radio. The 7-4612 was sold for a very long time, starting in the early 1980s and ending sometime in the late 90s or early 2000s. I haven't done any kind of scientific analysis on it or anything like that, but it's probably the single most common model I see when I'm searching for vintage digital clocks. There's dozens of them up for sale at any given time. After having seen so many of these for sale, I slowly grew more and more curious as to just why exactly this model was so popular. Clearly they had sold millions of these things. The design is clean looking, but it's not striking in any way. Perhaps its success is in that it just kind of blends into the background of the other furniture in a person's home, particularly a uh, home in the 1980s with tons of other wood grain things. Although this particular one is the later BK version, which is a black and silver color scheme. Now I waited to purchase one of these until I could find one that was new old stock. Since they're so common, I figured I might as well get one that's in uh, excellent condition. And I got this one at a very good price actually. I got quite lucky. It went for about the price that a used one would go for. I was surprised. Pleasantly surprised though. On the back here is a date code. It says 4050K. From digging online, you can translate these GE date codes as follows. The first digit is the day of the week, with 1 being Monday and 7 being Sunday. The next digit is the last digit of the year, which can get a little bit confusing because they use this scheme from the 1970s through the 1990s. But because of the model number and the packaging and all that, I'm 99% uh, sure that this particular one was made in 1990, so that's the zero there. And then the five zero is the week that it was made. I'm not sure what the K means. If any of you know what that is, uh, please let me know. I did take the time to translate that to an exact date. I don't remember that off the top of my head. I'll add it to the video. In any case, this radio has been sitting in its package for a very long time. It was made shortly before the fall of the Soviet Union and has lived through a lot of world events and uh, in all that time no one decided to open it and put it to use. So I get to be the first one to open it, which is nice. I very rarely get to open anything truly new old stock in terms of uh, consumer products. It's very hard to find early digital clocks that even have the packaging at all, let alone uh, finding ones that are unopened completely or unbuilt in the case of kit clocks or kit radios for that matter. Those of you that lived through the 1990s probably remember this sort of packaging here with these copper staples holding the lid shut. You don't really see that sort of thing anymore, but it was pretty common back then. I'm not sure how far back that style of packaging dates, but I remember seeing it pretty often in the 1990s. Alright, it's time to unbox this thing. I'll try to uh, show it as best I can. I'm going to use a screwdriver to remove these staples, and that's what I would have used back in the 90s as well. In fact, I've had this screwdriver since the 1990s. This is one of the first tools I got as a kid, so I figured this was the right one to use. I'm trying to do as little damage as possible to the packaging. I'd like to uh, preserve it if I can. You can see little holes here where the uh, tool that folded the staples over you know, punched in there and, and uh, did the folding. I 
Alright, the staples are out. And there's the clock. So here's the use and care guide for the model 7-4612. There's the same date code again in there. And the model's stamped on it. The uh, warranty has unfortunately expired, but hopefully I won't have need of that. Here's that use and care guide. We'll get to operating the radio in a little bit, and the clock portion, of course, as well. It's fairly feature-packed. I bet that aspect of it was uh, one of the things that helped sell it. Here's the registration document. They sure wanted a lot of info. I never really bothered filling these things out. There's the safety instructions. Don't dunk it in water or put it on the stove. Don't put out your cigarettes on top of it. <laughs> Alright, now let's get to the clock radio itself. The styrofoam is completely intact. That's nice. The little bits of styrofoam debris on everything. There it is. It honestly looks better than it did in the pictures I've seen online. I'm not sure how well it'll show up in the video, but the gray color here and the kind of slightly off black color here go well together. It honestly looks really nice and doesn't look super dated. The wood grain version of this, which is perhaps the more, uh, I guess you could say, iconic version of this clock radio is definitely more common. This was a later update, but I think it looks great. So there's the cord. In perfect condition as expected. It's a good thing they put it in a bag. Sometimes vinyl cords will react with hard plastic and leave marks. So that was a uh, wise decision on their part. Vinyl like this can also melt into styrofoam and then you'll have uh, bits of styrofoam residue on the cord. When you pack away something like this be sure to stick the cord in an old shopping bag or something if you don't have the original packaging. I'll put this away more neatly later. Alright, it's time to test this clock radio out. I've got my Variac underneath my desk, and I've got a uh, kilowatt meter here. I have the Variac set to 110 volts, but it's reading 115 here for some reason. I just wanted to give this thing a bit of a soft start. Annoyingly, my little meter here doesn't seem to like being plugged into the Variac at a reduced voltage. It's reading about 1 watt with nothing plugged in. Oh well, I'll just have to take that into account. 
Now, a lot of times when electrolytic capacitors have been sitting unused for you know years, especially decades, they will need to be reformed. Most of the time, that reforming process proceeds uh, uneventfully, but you will generally notice increased current draw over normal for at least a few seconds until the uh, dielectric reforms. Alright, here goes. Let's see what happens. Not really in this case, it's only drawing about one watt. That's not bad at all. Sometimes I've seen the wattage spike up to around three times more than normal and then fall back down. Or not in some cases. The classic blinking 12 o'clock is a good sign. Let's try setting it. I didn't really read the instructions, so I'm just going to figure it out as I go. I usually don't have instructions to go off anyway. Well, it's really easy to set the hours and minutes. If anything, it's too easy. I don't think there's any control to lock the settings. You could accidentally press one of those buttons when you're trying to turn the radio on or off. Speaking of the radio, let's test that out. First I'll turn down the volume though. That's over here. It has FM and AM. in your skin during the Jeep celebration event at the Matthews Club it's interesting that the controls haven't become scratchy with time though I guess it's been well protected inside its box low in the mid 40s and Sunday mostly cloudy 40% chance of shower. <laughs> Looks like having the radio going as an extra half watt of current draw. We actually did some research looking at biodegradable and compostable plastics and it was the longest experiment that I've ever done. <laughs> Well, it's sensitive and selective on FM. That's another point in this thing's favor. Let's try AM now. That's the local country station. I'm going to try plugging it in directly. Alright, it's now plugged in directly. So we'll see if the AM performance is a little better without having the variac in the circuit. So, uh, I'm a Trey Lance fan. Met the kid. Just love him. I think he's thoughtful, eye contact, humble, Seems about the smart. same to me. Uh, Alright, not too spectacular on AM, but not bad either. And there is a lot of interference from uh, other electronics around my desk. Let's try setting the alarm. 
and they'll uh, use the beep option since we already heard the radio. So to do that, you just hold down the wake button, I believe, and then press the hour and minute buttons. This button's a little touchy, probably due to some oxidization over time. I'm going to set the alarm to 3.04 a.m. And I'll set the current time to uh, 3.03 a.m. Then we'll switch it on. So now the little light next to wake is on. And uh, we'll wait a minute and see if it goes off. You can adjust the volume of the beeper alarm with the volume control just like the radio. Let's try the snooze button. Not sure how long the snooze period is, but I'm sure that's listed in the manual. Here's the battery compartment. It takes a standard rectangular 9 volt battery. Thankfully one was not packaged with the radio because it Probably would have leaked by now. I wonder how this uh, quality check thing translates. Maybe that's the various inspectors that they had there, one through eight. There's a little check mark on the boxes for three and five. This particular one was made in Malaysia. And here it says the model number 7 4612 BKA. I'm debating taking this clock apart to show you guys the insides. I do usually do that, although it feels a little sacrilegious to take apart something uh, brand new like this. Alright, thanks for watching.